Hello, I thought after my post yesterday with these, this yellow robin, it might be quite a nice thing to do a short live just to let you get a nice look around these things. So of course, I've a nice day up here, so I decided to try, try, trail out all these um, lovely little reliance, including something that's sitting over there as well, which I'll get to in a minute. So this is a 1975 Reliant Robin. All original new old stock parts been used to build it. It actually took me to not that long ago just to get that mirror. Because I got one set but I couldn't find the other one. This is the original Super Robin and you can tell it's the original because of the style of grill on them. The super early Super Robins all had this chrome mesh grill. Original spotlights as well fit into this car. And a little super feature I discovered in the book that not many people seem to be aware of. The Supers had a quartz halogen headlight fitted to them. Unlike just a normal sealed beam which the other Robins came with. So this has actually got the original headlights that this car would have came with from brand new. Thank, thanks Andrew. We'll move on to the 1976 Super Robin. Oh, uh, Super Robin? No. 1976 Robin 850 I mean. This is the second car I restored. It's got a set of alloys on it that was an optional extra for putting on of the um, Robins, well Mark 1 Robins. Biggest difference between this car and this car, although they look the same, is if you look at the fuel filler cap in the later 850s, because they decided it was better placed up there compared to the earlier 750s, which is in line with the bumper. The reason they did that was because when you turn corners for that one, the fuel used to run up the pipe and leak out of the top of the pipe. So, little facts that I've learned about this thing. This is an Aberdeenshire car. All these, well, apart from this one, these three here are all Aberdeenshire Reliance. Walk around it. This is all little bits I did because I went to the blue and chrome color scheme. I went for chrome decals and got this one made up especially for it. In the back, you can also see photos of the restoration, how it came to me, or how I found it. The chassis all stripped down in my workshop when I was rebuilding it. And I keep a price list for them as well, just for a bit of difference rebuilding the car. That's actually the way I remove the shells on them. With a Manitou forklift and a big fence post. It works brilliant for taking these off. Although I always do it with the doors on because it gives them more strength to lift it. There's actually a steel frame on doors for the windows. I've also got on some music in the background just to make it seem a bit more like a classic show. <laughs> but this car I had originally restored it with the intention of uh, selling it, believe it or not. But after owning it for, well, after even driving it the first time, I realised I just could not part with this. I'll let you see inside the car. Completely original, this one. The original front seats in it. All the original gauges. And I actually had a plaque fitted in it saying how fun it was restored because it just took a year to do this one up because I wanted to make sure if I ever did sell it that whoever knew well would know whoever did it and also if I ever wanted to find it hopefully that would let me find it again um, it's quite a basic interior on this thing there should be two pieces of vinyl comes down to the top of there but unfortunately this was never done with this car lovely starting machine as well you give this key a little turn. It is a 19, uh, 1976 with sports exhaust from Reliant Spares. And I'm not going to leave it running because my phone will probably connect to the Bluetooth on its radio. 
because that's the only modern extra I've fitted to this car. Because I like a little bit of luxury and having the music on them. Yeah, that they are brilliant. These vents are to open them. You just push that, and then for the direction, twist the vent around. And then that's not the only one in here as well. They've got actually three of those vents. You've got two below the dash as well. And they're the exact same. Twist around to set. Lovely little things. Blanking plates for all the extra switches on the dash. And the original horn, of course. This one is a lovely little motor. I'll close it. I don't think I showed you inside the Super Robin though. So I'll let you see it before I jump to the third car. This one is a 19... 75 interior, new old stock seats. By chance, I, sp I spoke to Reliance, Reliant Parts World. And when I was speaking to them, I just says you don't wouldn't be really any chance have seat covers for brown seats or tan seats. And the answer I got was no, but I think I've got two new old stock seats. And right enough, he did. These ones still have the Reliant Parts number written on them somewhere. I've got the stickers. Well, there's a sticker off of one of them. Line up there, I believe. The sticker on this one was somewhere else. I can't remember where it is now. But these are all brand new. I'm the first person to actually sit in these seats. And they are really comfy. Again, original dash. And this one has the radio fitted where it should be fitted. That's only because the hole was taken out when I got the car. Um, hazards has all the extra fe features of a Super, except it doesn't have the rear heated window for some reason. But I'm never going to have it out in the conditions it needs it. This one has had some bother recently, but I've recently been able to get it working right again. So it should just fire up on the button. Turned out to be some spark plugs just need cleaned. That is the ones. Let me just sit in over this one. That is the 1970s 70s door handles. I believe these are off of an Austin Allegro. And these are from a Ford Escort, Mark 1, I believe. Then you've got the... What other parts are off of our cars on these? There's a lot of bits that come off of different cars because Reliant, rather than spend money making their own parts for them, they bought them in from other manufacturers. As you can hear, this one's just a standard Roman. I'll give it a little blip as well. Now I'll let you see inside the engine bay this one, while it's running. Oh, and there's also these. These are, I don't know who they came from. I think that's Mini. Very simple to open the bonnet. Smith's heater. And the original. 750 engine. It's not a problem. I'm more than happy to share these classics with as much people as they want to see them. This, the only difference between this engine and the 850, which I'll show you in a second, is they have a Zenith carburetor fitted. The same as the earlier 700 line. Lovely little motor though. Everything been done like it should be. But I'll take you around and I'll show you an 850 engine which is on this next motor. That's the thing with Reliance that I've always found. You can never get the doors to shut perfect on a Robin. No matter how hard you do, you set it good there. Tight gap, well, that's as close as you can get that way without nipping the bodywork. And everything else just doesn't sit great on them. I believe it's just a Reliant thing. I think you're right, I'm sure there are many handles. I mean, it's mini hubcaps, I'm pretty sure, on this car as well. I mean, here's a here's this example for I was on about with the fuel. You can see, for I've been having a run with it today, it's actually been leaking fuel out of it. So that's going to be my job after this live, to go and clean all this up. Um, and a little fact, that's actually caravan taillights, as far as I'm aware. Or trailers. But right, I'll show you an 850 engine. So if we open this, the key for this one. This car's not usually has any mechanical problems. Apart from the beginning of every year it decides to somehow burst all its fuel hoses. The joys of modern pep. So here we go. 
this is the 850 Reliant engine. Also, the difference being they've a red top rocker cover. The 750s had a beige one, and the 700s had a black cover. And I think the 600s was black as well. And of course, the Zenith, no, the SU carburetor, they've they replaced the Zenith. Lovely little one. This is a lot better carburetor than the Zenith. Although I still like the feel of the Zenith in the 750s and the 700s. This one's closed there. And, as I say, you've seen wearing this one, so that leaves the third one in my collection to let you see. Which is this. This is a 1981 Reliant Robin 850 Super, I believe. Just because of the style it is. It doesn't have the right grills on the front of it, unfortunately. There was only one of them when I got it, and I still haven't got around to finding a decent set for it. This was picked up by a demolition grabber when I got it. Surprisingly, the window was still in it. This pillar had fallen out of it. This one was broken somewhere about here. And the same with that side. And it was split in the roof. Quite a sorry looking state of a car. Now, although it's not perfect, it's far from perfect this one. I'm really proud of it. Because it survives. And I've been able to help with that. This is obviously the the style that would have replaced that super robin, that super van, which I'll get to after this. This one isn't a local car to me. I think it was Birmingham registration. I could be wrong with that. Nottingham maybe. It's a yeah this one would have been probably one of the last few of the Robins well last batch of the Mark 1 Robins. This has a lot of parts on it that for some reason is the same as the Rialto. It's got a Rialto's rear doesn't make sense to me. And it also has the galvanized chassis which came out in the Rialtos. So I can only think that this was a very late one and they've just used what they had to build it. But it's a lovely little car. It had an up well it's interior original was. The original interior was all tan, but the seats were rotten and everything was gone in this car. So I got a chance for a tarrant interior and it really looks nice in it. This was a new old stock headlight. Oh no, this one's not new old stock, this was made by old trimming. Unfortunately, we've never actually managed to get it to sit just right because me and my dad did this ourselves. Um, but it's still, it's there and I like the fact we did it ourselves. But this is another lovely one. I'm not sure if this will start again. The battery is quite low in it, unfortunately. It doesn't get out as much as I'd like. It should get out a lot more, but just the way that it's, it's happened, it never does. But before I go to the left, I'm going to go this one. And this is the current project. And now I've realised what fell on the ground. I did hear a slight knock a minute ago. This is a 1971, as I'm sure you can see from the J in the number plate. Reliant Supervan. This one I've only actually owned for two weeks. Two, yeah, two weeks on last Friday. And in that time, it's had the full front end reshaped and rebuilt so that it now looks like a front end of a Supervan. It has a lot of stuff to do to it still. I'm planning on starting sanding this down quite soon. I took the door handle off to get the code for the key. So at the moment, you push in the, the hole and it opens. This van will be going back to the original blue, which I'm still am on the hunt for. But I mean, it's all there. It's a lovely little thing. Indicators. The original speedometer, which believe it or not was only made for Reliant by AC, I believe. And I'm hoping it all works. I've not tested this one at all. I've not even tested my first Supervan's gauges, but fingers crossed. But because the hinges, the hinges are actually completely rotten on the bottom of it. So you have to close the door and lift it. And it's got a lovely note. I love the noise of these early as reliant doors closing. This one, it's not had much done to the back. Common fault with the super van, these get pulled out. This one's been just pulled the nuts out of it. This one actually snapped the bodywork. So this has all been fiberglass in place. Once this is sanded, prepped, you'll never know that that was broken and it will 
have a lot more strength because I'm going to be putting an aluminium, or no, stainless steel even, plate in the back of here to reinforce it all and just give it that strength it needs back. Obviously, someone was a slight bit rough with this light when they removed it. These have the lovely, lovely rear lights. These came with two lights. The last ones came in the same style as the Mark I Robins. But then they also came with the Lucas L572s. And I really like the look of these. They're lovely little lights. Nice bit of chrome work. It just looks great. They are just waiting for some new seals to arrive and then I'll get them rebuilt. There's not a lot much more to show on this one. A couple of repairs I've done on this side. Um, but yeah, another lovely little motor. These things, a little fact that I learnt at, when I got a book about them at Christmas time. This is the car that Reliant tried to push on people to maintain at home. And they claimed it had really ease of access. Yeah, it has quite good access in there. But to get into the engine bay, that's where it is. Quite awkward. And what I've been told is a lot of mechanics, well, the mechanic I spoke to from Aberdeen that used to work on these, told me to set the distributor, and the, well, set up the distributor, so points and timing out. You had to take the distributor off the engine because it was so I know this is true because I've done one, one of my 1972 Reliant Regal 330 and getting into that little hatch in there is a nightmare. But anyway, I'll move on from this because there's not much more I can tell you about it at the moment. There's more running gear coming for it tomorrow, which means in the next few days I'll be very busy building all that up. But the final one I'm sure that a lot of people will be liking to see is this. This old girl's a 1964 Scammel Scarab. Originally worked for the GPO, there's not known to be another surviving GPO of Scarab left. The last one was scrapped. I do not know the exact year, but I know it was scrapped because the Scarmel Club actually told me the scrapper cut the top of the cab off, just right across there, and put a crane on the back of it for working the scrap yard. So they, from they came across, they were still able to see it. silver chassis in is on this. People would say that shouldn't be silver, it should be black, because British rails were always black. Most of us didn't like the black ones for some reason. They all did their chassis silver, and they did the, well, the wheels black, chassis silver. There's not much of else to it. A lovely little example. This one has the Perkins 499 engine. It's just a three tonner. Just a little one, but lovely little machine. This is my favourite thing. You pull up to your trailer, you obviously automatic couple in to hook up. All you do to put your number plate on, pull that handle, off comes your number plate. Onto your trailer, there's a similar thing like this. Slip over, line it up there, give it a push and you've locked in your number plate. This one's need a little bit of a clean up, which I'm going to do this later today. So that's that one. Original diesel tank, all got rebuilt for it. And of course it's got an original interior. These seats off a Field Marshal tractor actually. That's the closest replica one I could get to fit these. Although I think the sponge is slightly thicker on these than what it would have been on a Scarab because the wheel spacing is not much, as you can see there. Three levers, nearest, I'll start from the nearest side going farthest away. The nearest one is the trailer part brake. You've then got the trailer release brake mechanism. And on the far side, the parking brake for the tractor unit. Pedals is just the normal of what they would be. Clutch, brake and throttle at the farthest away. You've then also got the electrical board, which is my addition to this lorry. Originally these were bolted straight through the cab and I did not want to bore holes in my newly painted cab so that board has been fixed on in place of it which really makes a difference as far as I'm concerned. And also to finish the look of the inside it 
This is an original GPO fire extinguisher. The, ha the holder was still there, but the extinguisher was gone. All its original badges. I've still got a badge to fit on the top of the dash, which should be up here, which I've got the, rec the details of what was on it now. So that's on my list to get done. I'll close this door. Post office serial number for the, the Scarab when it was in Aberdeen. Obviously, the way these work, post office, obviously, we owned it. That's the serial number it was allocated from the post office. And whoever, wherever it worked, so that would have been Aberdeen in this case, was there. Or if it had been, let's say, in Paris, London, it would all have different indications of where it worked there. The original side light stems, which I had to give a paint up just to clean up the black rubber. New, new old stock rubelite side lights. These are actually built from a new and an old one. That's the original rubelite indicator base that was on the Scarab when I got it. Because the top was all knackered, I got these uh, later ones, which I believe are the rubelite 35, which I can tell you so I can't tell you, it's, it's usually written on them. In fact, I can tell you for these ones. That one's a 34, a Rubelite 34, and this is the Rubelite 35. But you can make them look just like they would. Thanks, Andrew. I, I've tried my best to get this one as it would have looked, like new or slightly better. <laughs> I also added little additions to it, like so the period tax disc for it. And that's an original new old stock Desmo tax disc holder I got. I just need to get the heavy goods vehicle license disc for there. And of course, it didn't have a table originally when I got it, but luckily the yard that it spent most of its life in had a few of these still about, and I managed to get one for it. So this is the original, what they would have had on them all along. We polished this all up and just filled in the black behind it. I think it looks brilliant. This lorry had been involved in a lot of bashes and smashes when it was in working life. One of them you can still see. When you look at the bumper from here, quite close that side. Ah, oh, just spaced out there. But it's spring metal. As much as I've tried to straighten it, it was straight and heated and got all in the right shape. It went back on the lorry and as soon as the bolts was tightened, went back to its old shape. <laughs> but it's a lovely little machine. Best thing about this is is simplicity and with this one because I know I'm, I'll have to do it let's get a little start so you jump in over the cab very old-fashioned kind of style indicators starter switch heat starts back that way so you heat it for 15 seconds then turn it again and it'll start that would be brilliant, that, actually. <laughs> I would quite like an old GPO look for it. But I'll give it a little start up and let you see it. So that's a scammel. Fired up. Everything the way it should be. Very little to go wrong with this. Clutch. Gear down here. Lovely little machine. And of course the stop cord which is next to you. Which you just pull it there. But I'm gonna end this now because I've got quite a lot of vehicles to put past as well. And I've actually recorded a version of this as well that I will be uploading sometime soon, which is another walk around just similar to this. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I would have loved to have had both my super vans here and the Regal. But the Regal is currently on loan to Grampian Transport Museum. And until the situations change at the moment, it won't be able to be getting people seeing it until we're able to let people into the attractions. But yeah, the other super van is actually away at the painters. So unfortunately it can't be here because of that reason. But I'm going to end it as I say, and I'll go and start tidying up this collection of three wheelers. Well, and one four wheeler wheeler at the moment. But thanks for watching.